Hi guys, welcome to Code Insight TV. I'm Malcolm Groves. On today's episode, uh, I want to share an interview I did with Steve Williamson. Steve is the development manager at Foresight uh, up in Queensland. Um, Foresight um, have for a long time had a, a Delphi application uh, focused on the retail space. Steve will explain more about what it does. Um, they've been very successful with this Delphi application. Um, but the reason that I wanted to talk to Steve um, is because they've been, over the last 12 months or so, they've been doing something really interesting with uh, RAD Server technology. Essentially, they've used RAD Server to take um, this existing Delphi client server application and an application that is um, single store, um, not, not distributed, um, and enabled it using RAD Server. They've enabled it for the cloud, um, they've enabled it for multi store. Um, they've enabled it to add uh, an Angular-based web application as, a, as, an, as an additional front-end. Um, they've uh, positioned themselves to now add mobile front-ends. Um, so, so using Red Server, they've not only done all of this to, to um, uh, extend the life and revitalize their, their Delphi um, application, their existing Delphi application, They've done it all with the same team of Delphi developers who've been building and maintaining this application for years. I think it's a fantastic story. Um, so Steve agreed to um, spend some time on a whiteboard with me where he took us through um, what they did, what the problem was, how they solved it, um, what the experience of working with Red Server was like, what some of the challenges were. Um, so I hope you find this interesting. Uh, I certainly found it interesting. Uh, and hopefully it will spark some ideas about what you might be able to do with your existing Delphi code bases. Cheers. Hey guys, uh, I'm here with Steve Williamson. Steve's the development manager at Foresight. Uh, and the reason that I'm talking to Steve is that uh, uh, Foresight is a long time Delphi shop, um, but they've been doing some really cool stuff with uh, the RAD server technology in the last, what, 12 months? 12 months, yes. 12 months or so. Um, so I want to catch up and get a bit of a picture of what they've been building and what they're now deploying. Correct. Yeah. All right. So, Steve, uh, tell us the story. Okay. Thanks, Malcolm. Uh, so, Foresight, um, for quite a number of years, have been developing a uh, business management software suite. Uh -huh. So, the software includes point of sale, cash register modules, invoicing, accounts payable, uh, accounts receivable, and uh, integrated through the general ledger. Yep. Um, so, we've got a whole bunch of customers sort of throughout Australia running that software uh, locally at a store level. Mm -hmm. Now, what we've uh, the challenge we've had in the last couple of years is that a lot of these customers are um, members of uh, groups, uh, buying groups, okay. or franchise and, and that sort of thing. Yep. And we're finding that there's a lot of duplication of effort from one system to the next. Okay. So we'll have um, you know a store that's sitting there punching away, updating their prices on their stock file every day and updating their descriptions and that sort of thing. And then just down the road at the next store, They've got another person sitting there in an office doing the same job, okay. punching away. Because essentially each boxes. of these stores are standalone instances. That's right. So yep. these, are, these are individual companies yep. um, that are independently owned, uh, but they have a relationship to one another. So they, you know, they're, they're in the same industry hmm. and they, um, they buy their product through the same um, wholesalers or distributors. Yep. So some of the data needs to be shared, but obviously some of it probably doesn't. That's correct. Yeah, there's yep. a good portion of the data that's private, yep. um, but there's also a fair amount of data a significant amount that's um, you know consistent from one store to the next. Okay. Okay. Uh, so yeah, our challenge was to um, provide a system to those uh, businesses that allowed them to um, 
uh, centralise the data entry point for all of that data. Yep. So st we're starting with stock information, but there's a whole lot more than just that. Mm -hmm. Um, and allow them to have that data controlled up at one uh, spot, you know, up at a head office or a support office, and then have that flow down to the store level. Okay. And so um, before we get into how you solved that, so at, at this store level, this is a, a Delphi client server app? Yeah, that's correct. So we've had a, a Delphi client server app that runs locally um, at the store or on the store server if they're if they have a you know if they're a two-store site yep um, and then that's a modularized system so they switch on the modules that they need whether that's point of sale or invoicing or okay. accounts um, so Delphi VCL app talking to what's the database in store that's a DBICM, DBICM? database okay okay, yep. okay. Um, and um, how how long has this app been being developed been in existence uh, this app was development began in around about um, 2000 and was okay. first released in 2001. Okay, so there's a, there's a reasonable um, heritage there of probably many years of source code, many different developers over the years, I imagine. Correct. Okay. M many million lines of code. Yep. Many million. Okay. <laughs> so it's reasonable size. Yes. Okay. Good. Good. So you've got this these largely standalone Delphi client server apps. Um, how do you how do you glue them together? Yeah, so that was a challenge. So, uh, what we uh, first did when we undertook the project is we looked at how it was that we wanted to uh, deploy this mm -hmm. in, in the, the the end result of uh, deployment. Yep. So we sort of started there and worked backwards. So we knew that what we wanted to do, um, you know, from the beginning was design this in a way that it was going to be cloud friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, so it could be distributed and hosted on uh, cloud services and and um, sort of negate any need for for the uh, the clients to invest more money in servers on site. Yep. Okay. Okay. So we started there, and we looked at firstly uh, what database we would use mm -hmm. to host this data because it's pretty significant, um, uh, you know, amounts of data that we're talking about, yep. particularly in the future once we start adding more functionality and pushing data back up from the stores and that sort of thing. Yeah. So we did our uh, did our um, uh, you know our due diligence and our research, and we ended up selecting the, the SQL Server database to sit at the top. Okay. Okay. And that's running on, uh, you were talking about cloud, so at the moment that's running on what, what cloud infrastructure? Uh, so that's running on Azure. Yep. So it's a, a, a SQL Server on Azure. Yep. In a hosted environment. Now that could be run on uh, AWS or any sure. other cloud environment. But, sure. Um, but in our at, case, at the moment that's where it is. Azure made sense for us. Okay. 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 And then we needed a way to, um, to get that data from here down to the stores. Yep. And so the, the, the key for us for this piece of the puzzle was to build that on a, uh, a standards based interface mm -hmm. so we didn't want something sort of you know ad hoc that we'd built from the ground up ourselves that was going to you know become legacy in a short yep. amount of time yeah um, so for us the, the logical choice was a rest interface okay okay uh, why was that the logical choice okay well there's there's a few reasons for that yep <laughs> um, the the key for us with rest is that the uh, the ease of use of the interface. Okay. So for the developer that's got to work at the other side, that's mm -hmm. going to connect to that REST interface, um, it, it really becomes, uh, once once they start to get used to what resources are available, it almost becomes sort of self-documenting. Okay. So it's as simple as hitting a couple of endpoints, yep. get back some data, and I've got an object, I know yep. what it looks like, I know what I can do with it. Okay. At a basic level. Yeah, yeah. okay. So that makes sense. So you want you want to be able to expose some REST endpoints, REST APIs out to your clients. Yes. So th there was one more reason that um, oh, okay. we, sorry that we no, the REST right. interface. Um, we uh, the idea with the design of this application was that right now we're connecting these Delphi VCL applications, mm -hmm. but in the future we don't know what other applications there might be. So yep. We need that to be extensible and yep. standards based. Okay. So we might want mobile applications. We might want sure. Web well, actually, not even in the future because we'll get to this box over here in a little while. But sure. Okay. Yep. All right. Cool. So, uh, what did you end up choosing up here? Okay. So we went for EMS server. Yep. To build our uh, REST client, and really with the the existing um, uh, data snap infrastructure that was in place underneath that it was kind of a no-brainer for us okay so that gave us the you know the the, uh, the known um, quantity of uh, data snap which mm -hmm. we knew was a reliable infrastructure we've used it before okay and then the the rest design that we wanted sits on top of it okay 
Okay. So, so you st- can you walk me through a little bit about like how do you start this? I mean, potentially, how do you begin? I don't want to say retrofitting, but how do you uh, begin sort of connecting this cloud-based infrastructure into an existing Delphi app that's been up and running for more than a decade? Okay, um, so there were really two stages to the way that we've done that. Uh, the first thing we did was we sort of took away this part of the puzzle and, and we disregarded how we were going to get the data from here to here. Okay. All we looked at was that we're going to have some data up here uh, and we're going to have some data down here locally at the clients mm-hmm. and we need to pull that together. So the somehow. Fir- so somehow. <laughs> initially there's some hand waving saying some magical process will get this data down here. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so the first thing we did was we went through um, the existing VCL application and um, did a whole lot of work to the, the underlying database and the user interface to allow for the fact that we were going to have both local data that would that would never be anywhere other than local to the store mm-hmm. and we would have shared data that would be coming down from this um, from this central point. Okay. Okay, so we've, uh, yeah, we've designed a little bit of a permission system around that and that sort of thing where, you know, the data that's local can, it can be freely accessed by the users, but then shared data will have okay. c- certain restrictions around it. Okay, that's fair. That, that makes sense. Yep. Okay. So now you know that the local app can deal with remote data, then it's a question of how do you get that remote data down there? Yep. Sure. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so the way we tackled that is we uh, we started a new module, mm-hmm. so an add-on module for our existing application. Uh, so that that module was built um, from the ground up using the current version of Rad Studio. Mm-hmm. So at the time that was uh, Delphi XC8, but since moved to Seattle and then Berlin. Okay. Um, and so that that application uh, leverages some of the the um, out of the box uh, backend components and mm-hmm. REST components. Yep and connects up to this guy. Okay. Pulls down some data and away we go. Okay. And so that, that, that when you say it's a separate module, it, it's a separate uh, XE or service or whatever it is that's writing into that DBISM table that your, that your existing Delphi app is also reading from. Yeah, spot on. Okay. It, it's, it's actually both. It's a, it's a standalone application and a service. Okay. So there's a user um, interface yep. that the user can go to and initiate some activity. So say, uh, give me an update of all my uh, products mm-hmm. and I will pull that down right now and show them the progress and so on. And okay. then there's also a service that runs uh, in the background and that's got a scheduler system behind it. So okay. that can be user configured to say, um, I want to update my product stock on hand every hour, mm-hmm. but I only need to update my product descriptions once a week or something sure. like that. Sure, just depending on how, how volatile this data is. Precisely. Okay. Yeah. You've got this module that's polling at variable intervals up to get this data. How are you getting the data that it's pulling down? Sorry, that was phrased really badly, but you know, do you know what I mean? Like, no, where's yeah, this data I, coming from? I understand, so, okay, so at this, um, the uh, EMS server that we've got running up here, uh, we have a, underneath that we have uh, the FIDAC uh, mm-hmm. infrastructure. Yep. So the FIDAC um, provides the data access layer Okay. which is connecting up to this SQL Server database yep. and pulling our data down from there. Now, the, the way that we've designed these is these two components are completely disconnected. Okay. Um, so that's that's done to give us flexibility and deployment and also uh, the, the key was scalability there as well. Mm-hmm. Okay, so so this, uh, this guy here just has some configuration parameters in it to point to the uh, SQL Server database. Okay and then that can be pushed off to anywhere we like. So at the moment, we've got this sitting on um, SQL Azure, and this is on a uh, Azure um, virtual machine. Okay. But we could pull this out to an Amazon Web Services or whatever we needed, Okay. and we can sort of scale that up and scale that out. Well, have multiple copies of that running dealing with, as the load of the number of, of stores or clients increases. Exactly right, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. so that middle tier is designed to be able to be replicated and perform the same job. Okay, so so can you talk a bit more about this? Like I'm I'm, so you've you've got a team here who've probably been working on this VCL app for years, a number of years. Yep. Um, this I could easily imagine being um, a bit of a challenge to suddenly say, guys, you're now going to build a server. Yeah. Yes. Definitely. Um, so we we don't have a separate team developing this. It's okay. all the same guys. Okay. So the guys that that 
build down at the store level here, also uh, building this um, uh, middle tier architecture. Yep. Uh, so what we found that was that using the um, uh, the EMS back end is mm -hmm. we really you know already had a great deal of familiarity with the way that it was all designed. We had yep. done a bit of work with uh, Data Snap before. Okay. And really the biggest challenge was just getting our head around the differences between uh, REST to you know the older uh, interfaces like SOAP and that sort of thing that we'd mm -hmm. more traditionally used. Okay, well that's but that's kind of cool. You've got. I'm glad they, they may not like me referring to them as this, but you've essentially got front end guys, who or, or client server guys, who ha, uh, have taken on this job of building a, a, a REST API and, and an implementation of that. Um, and the biggest challenge wasn't the technology; it was really getting their head around the conventions in REST and, and how to design a good REST API rather than the mechanics of building it. Yeah, precisely. The, the, that's exactly right. The, the technology was kind of, you know, we're already familiar with it. There's just a, okay. some different sets of components, a few new things to learn. But, yep. but really it was, yeah, just getting our head around. Um, you know, obviously we'd uh, written against uh, REST APIs before. On the client side. On the client side. Yep. But, um, you know, being on the other side of the ledger there and having to actually design yep. that API and, uh, yeah. You know, apply a set of standards that we wanted to use across the board was yeah. was really all well, those years of cursing whoever it was who built the the client api you were trying to use now it was your job to build one as well well we had to make sure we didn't didn't make the same mistakes yeah so. yeah okay okay cool um um so a second ago you were talking about in the future you you chose but one of the reasons you chose rest was because the potential for other sorts of clients um can we talk about this box over here at the moment? Sure, okay, so uh, what we've got here is the head office or the support office, and now this is what controls the data that's actually sitting up in this main database here. Yep. Okay, so the the product information, and the, the product grouping, and um, you know, stock levels, and all that sort of thing that's getting fed down to the stores yep. uh, is getting controlled by uh, this application up here. Okay. Now the requirement for that application was uh, that was not necessarily to be a Windows based application. Mm -hmm. We wanted that to be able to be uh, accessed via the web. Mm -hmm. um, and there are a few reasons for that. One of those was that we wanted to be able to use that on a tablet device. Okay, yep. Um, so what we've done there is we've actually built a application on top of the Angular JS framework. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's all sort of JavaScript based. Yep. And that's connecting directly into our REST service there. Okay. And so so I'm already impressed that, that you got the same guys building the, the VCL app and the server side. I'm assuming you didn't also force them to become JavaScript developers and build this side. I think that would be uh, asking That's a, little, a, big ask. a little bit too yeah. much. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So no, we've got, a, we've got a couple of guys, um, JavaScript guys working on the front end there. Okay. Yeah. And so what was that process like? Because essentially you're getting them to integrate with... Yes, REST APIs, but the REST imp APIs implemented in Delphi. Like from their point of view, did they see any of that or, or care? Really, they didn't care. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All they care about is they've got a REST API. They've got some JSON to work with. Yeah. They hit that API. They pull down some JSON. They get some data. They've got some objects to work with. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it's just it's standards based. Okay. So that was so far has been a, a, a really really smooth process for us. Okay. They probably cared a lot more about the decisions good or otherwise you made in designing your API than they didn't care about Delphi. Yeah, exactly. And, and these guys have been quite helpful you mm. know, with the input into the way that we've designed that API as well. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, the, the front end guys, they work with APIs every day. Yeah. Okay. So that's kind of cool. So that, that really you've, you've gone from having these standalone VCL apps running in a store or maybe a small group of stores to this cloud-based solution that's now pulling in JavaScript guys with Angular web front ends, um, and I don't know. I don't want everything's easy on a whiteboard, but it doesn't sound like it was that hard. I mean, what were the big challenges here? Yeah, <laughs> I know I'm brushing over all of probably all of these nightmares that you had, but yeah, uh, yeah, nightmares probably uh, not the right word. Too strong. Okay. Yeah. No, there were there were challenges. Of of course there were, and it's you know that's just part of learning um, new software and sure. you know, new design concepts. Um, but uh, yeah, really, probably um, the biggest thing we've had to deal with is just the the way that we're deploying this and mm -hmm. um, the you know the, the different environments they're working on. So 
getting this up on an, on an IIS server, mm -hmm. um, getting this guy deployed on an, an Azure cloud. Yep. So all these environments that, you know, we've done a little bit of work with before, but it's all kind of getting all the pieces together right. of the puzzle and, and having everything. Getting you know, the plumbing work, all connected. and Work, getting... work as per how it looks on a whiteboard. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, there's, a, there's always going to be a little bit more to that than, than meets sure. the eye. But that's interesting that it wasn't really programming challenges, if I'm, if, if I'm hearing right. Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, pro oh, okay. we're, we're coding in the language we're used to. We're, we're using the, the, you know, just some new components and things like that. But okay. it's, it's all very familiar to us. Cool. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. um, so you, I think you said before that you're, you're deploying now. You're going live kind of now. Yeah, we're doing in the final stages of QA at the moment. And we're, okay. do, we're um, uh, in the middle of our staging deployment right now. So. Yeah. So um, it'll start hitting the users very soon in the next couple of months. Okay, okay, that's awesome. And so then, what's the what's the future plans? Obviously, uh, you know, not your business future plans. I realise sure. you probably won't share those. Um, but in terms of from a technology point of view, or from additional clients, or, or whatever it is. Okay. Well, the first thing that we we need to do is. Um, We've got to scale this up. Okay. So we already have a, a customer in place right now that's ready to put this in. We're mm -hmm. starting work on that right now. Um, currently, that's a, a six-store site, so we've got six stores uh, connecting up through this REST interface. Mm -hmm. But that's going to grow, you know, quite significantly over the next couple of years. Okay. To um, yeah, dozens of stores. Yep. So we need to um, make sure that we've got the scalability right. Yeah. So there's going to be a little bit of work for us there on the. Um, the way that we're deploying that to make sure that we can replicate and, and yep. scale out and, and yep. scale up as required. Yep, fail over when things inevitably, you know, the, the story of the cloud is that stuff fails and you kind of got to anticipate that. Yeah, of yeah. course. Um, beyond that, we've got a whole heap of functionality that we, uh, yep. we've got um, uh, backed up and ready to go. Yep. Uh, so right now we're... Um, we're just bringing some data down to the stores, mm -hmm. but in the future we'll also be pushing data up from the stores. Okay. Um, so things like um, sales information and that sort of thing uh, for uh, analytical purposes. Yep. So once we start to get a good uh, sort of critical mass of stores up and running, mm -hmm. we are be able to push some of that data up and do some really good analysis up here against that database. Okay. Okay. So what, what, I'm just curious, what's the reaction been like from, like you've talked about the fact that the development team found this, you know, comfortable, it was the language they knew, the environment they knew, it was just an extension of it. But what's the reaction been like from your managers and, and the company, I guess, in terms of doing this? Uh, to be honest, the, the management team have been really happy with the way it's all progressed. Okay because we've come under budget. <laughs> oh, that's always good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> First box ticked. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so we've really managed to do it, get the work done with probably less resources than what we otherwise would have expected if we had to go and yeah. say, take this and, and you know put a whole other team together to, to, build, yeah. to build that architecture. Okay. So okay. management are thrilled. <laughs> yeah, oh, good, good. I think this is an awesome story. You, you, you've taken this, what, what some people would have viewed as a fairly static you know, the architecture's set. And with not too much surgery required on the front end, you've extended it into the cloud with a REST-based API, you've now got web front ends on, you've got the potential for mobile front ends, you know, cloud-based deployment, um, with essentially the same team of, of Delphi guys who've been maintaining the app for years. Yep, pretty much. Awesome, all right. Anything else you want to tell everyone, everyone about or anything you want to call out about it? I suppose um, I suppose just one of the exciting parts about all of this is that that you know what we've built right here now kind of opens up a whole lot more opportunities for us. Yeah. So we've got this architecture in place. We know how it all works. It works well. Mm -hmm. um, so now we can start to use this to expand on uh, you know the existing system yep. and put new functionality on top of it. So you know, build partnering mobile applications and web applications and reporting services and all the, you yep. know, all these sorts of things. Okay. So it just opened up the, the possibilities of what you can do with this with this code base and this yeah, system. Absolutely. Yep. Fantastic. It's pretty exciting. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks Steve. I appreciate the time. Thanks for having me.